Hello, family. I pray that you've had a great week thus far. I want to once again thank you for joining us on this evening. As we see what God is saying to you and I regarding some of the things that our world and our nation, our cities, our, our counties are going through, I'm quite sure that you being on social media, you've, you, you've, you've seen all the Black Lives Matter, All Lives Matter, uh, Blue Lives Matter. And to be quite frank with you, you're right. All lives matter. But as believers in Christ, I believe that we are held to a high accountability for what, one, God expects of you and I. Two, I believe that we're held to a higher accountability of what the world should expect from you and I. So on tonight, we're just going to walk through the Word of God just to see what I believe God has to say to you and I as it relates to all that's going on in our nation. So get your Bible because you're going to need it tonight. Amen? If you will bow with me, Father in heaven, we thank you so much for all that you've done. We thank you for the many blessings that you've bestowed in our lives in spite of everything that's going on. You've been a good God, Father. You've been better to us than we've been to ourselves. So, Father, I pray now that as we look into your word, I pray that it blesses those that, that are having some challenges with the things that are going on in our nation. I pray now, Father, that as believers in Christ, that we will soon come to the realization that it's not about color. It's, it's not about ethnicity. It's not about orientation, but it's about righteousness. So, Lord... Walk with us this evening. Be with us, Father. Open eyes, Father. Open hearts, Father. Allow confessions of repentance, Father, on tonight. And Lord, I pray blessings upon all those that are listening. I pray blessings over their homes and their families, Father, their finances. I pray blessings, Father, over all that they put their hands to. Keep them, Father, in your perfect peace as we go through continued challenges of COVID-19, continued challenges of financial difficulties, continued challenges, Father, of unemployment statuses. Father, I pray that as only you can, that you provide peace, you provide unity, you provide, Father, the love and, and, and that which we need, Father, to, to continue in this walk with you. Now, Lord, I must confess, some of us are struggling right now. And we're not only struggling, Father, financially, we're struggling, Father, as, as how we should treat our brother. Yes, we are. So, Father, I pray now in the name of Jesus that you, as only you can, you speak and allow us to hear. And, Father, we'll be ever so mindful and careful to give your name glory, all of the honor, and all of the praise. It's in Jesus' name we do pray and we ask it all. Amen and thank God. Well, family, if you don't mind, if you'll turn with me, to Deuteronomy chapter 32, we're going to begin in verses 3 and 4. And this is going to be the beginning of the lesson in which we're going to be looking at on tonight. And uh, and just to tag it so that we can have a point of reference, I'm going to uh, tag it with standing up for justice. Standing up for justice. And just to put a little bit more to that, ask yourself this question. What can I do to help establish and to preserve justice for my fellow man? What can I do to help establish and preserve justice for my fellow brother and sister? And I want, at the end of this lesson, my prayer is, is that you will look and you will realize that God is just and he expects his followers to establish and to preserve justice not for some but for all so family over in Deuteronomy chapter 32 verses 3 and 4 they read for I proclaim the name of the Lord ascribe greatness to our God the rock, his work is perfect, for all his ways are just. 
a God of faithfulness and without injustice. Righteous and upright is he. So the very first question that I have for you and I on tonight, family, is what does that particular text say to you about the God in which we serve? What, what is he like? What's being revealed in his character? What's being revealed in his actions? And how does it make you feel? Now, before we get to answering some of those, I, I want to just take our, uh, also take our attention to, to another text. If you'll go with me over to Isaiah. Isaiah chapter 30, verse 18. Give you a moment to get there. Isaiah chapter 30, verse 18. It reads, Therefore the Lord longs to be gracious to you, and therefore he waits on you high on high to have compassion on you. Let me read that again. Therefore, the Lord longs to be gracious to you, not to some, not to a certain segment of our population, but he longs to be gracious to whomever you are. And therefore, he waits on high to have compassion on you. Now, let's take that and just turn it a little bit because you can also be stated as being. He waits to have compassion on everyone. For the Lord is a God of justice. How blessed are all those who long for him. With that also being said, family, if you will turn with me to Psalms 37. Psalms 37, verse 28. Give you just a moment. Psalms 37, we're still in the Old Testament. Psalms 37, verse 28. It says, for the Lord loves justice and does not forsake godly ones. They are preserved forever. But the descendants of the wicked will, will he cut off. But the descendants of the wicked will he cut off. Well, family, let me go back to Deuteronomy. Deuteronomy 32, 3 and 4. Let's open that up a little bit because it says, For I proclaim the name of the Lord, ascribe greatness to our God, the rock. His work is perfect, for all his ways are just. A God of faithfulness and without injustice, righteous and upright is he. What is that saying to you and I, family? Well, first of all, family, that's saying that God is a rock. And when you think of a rock, that means that he is solid. He is immovable. What he says, you can stand on it. He's a rock. And when he says that he's perfect and he's just, that means that without, without a shadow of a doubt, God is just, not just just to some, but he's just to all. He's not just just to the African American. He's not just just to the Anglo. He's not just just to the Hispanic. He's not just just to the Asian or whatever other ethnicity that there may be out there. But the Bible says that he is perfect and he is just. And he is faithful, and watch this, without prejudice. He's righteous, and he's true. Family, you need to realize that God requires justice, not just for some, but he requires justice for all. Now let's go back over to Isaiah. Go back to Isaiah chapter 30. Isaiah chapter 30, verse 18. Let's see what it says again. It says, therefore, the Lord longs to be gracious to you. And therefore, he waits on you 
he waits rather on high to have compassion on you for the Lord is a God of justice. How blessed, watch this, are all those who long for him. In other words, family, this text is saying to you and I that God's waiting to show mercy. He's waiting to show compassion. And he is just. Who is he waiting on? He's waiting on you and he's waiting on me. But now let me make sure that I make this very clear. He's not just waiting on you and he's not just waiting on me. The text says, it says, how blessed are all those who long, or in other words, who love, or in other words, who have accepted him as their personal Lord and Savior and are longing for his second coming. He's waiting on you and I. And he's waiting to show mercy. And he's waiting to show compassion. And if God is waiting to show compassion and he's waiting to show mercy on you and I, why is it that we have a problem with being merciful or with, be, with showing compassion or with being just to our brothers and our sisters? Well, let me, let me, let me take you a little bit deeper. Let's go to Psalm 37. It's right here in the text, Psalm 37, verse 28. It says, for the Lord loves justice. Over in the New Testament, the Bible says, how can you love your brother? How can you love me, brother, but yet hate your brothers and your sisters? So therefore, if we love God, then we love what God loves. And the Bible says, Psalms 37, verse 28, it says, For the Lord loves justice and does not forsake his godly ones. Who are his godly ones? His godly ones are his children. The Bible says that for God so loved the world, that he gave his only begotten son. So who is his, who, who does he love? He loves his children. He say, and he says, they are preserved forever. But now watch this, because it's, see, some of us, we all, we, all we want to live with is what God says, with what, with, 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 with his love. We, we want to talk about his mercy, and we want to talk about his grace, but we don't want to talk about God's wrath, because it's right here in the text. It says, first of all, he loves justice, and he loves showing justice to all of his children. We've already established that, but watch this. He also is establishing that for those that do not love like him, for those that do not show justice and mercy like him. It says, the descendants of the wicked will be cut off. Now, for some of you, that should have made you a little, a little nervous. Because some of you aren't showing that same love that God desires to show his children. Some of you aren't showing that same justice that God is showing his children. Some of you aren't showing that same mercy that God is wanting to show his children. You, some of us are, 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 are so wrapped up in our own ideology. Some of us are so caught up in our own anger that we've forgotten that all of mankind are God's children. All of mankind are his creation. And if he love them, then so should we. God loves justice. And the one thing that I love about him, he's not going to abandon those that are faithful to him. The Bible suggests that he's going to keep us forever. But now watch this, because see, some of us got that us mixed up. Turn with me over to James. Yeah, turn with me to James chapter 1. James chapter 1, verse 17. Watch what, let's see what the text says. The Bible says that every good thing, not some, 
every good thing given and every perfect gift, watch this, is from above. You didn't give it. No man can give it. Every good thing, every blessing is because of God. It comes from above and it says coming down from the Father of lights. Now watch this because this is where a whole lot of us miss it. It's right here in the text. New Testament, James chapter 1, verse 17. It says, with whom there is no variation or shifting shadow. Let's go back to that word variation. Variation means that it, it goes from side to side. It moves forward and back. It shakes. It's continually moving. But the text says that there is no variation in what God is doing for his people. In other words, family, what it's saying is he doesn't care who you are. He doesn't care what color you are. He doesn't care what your orientation is. He doesn't care what kind of money you have in the bank. The Bible says he loves you simply because of you. And if God loves me, a little black boy, Brought up in the ghetto. If God loves me, a little, little black boy raised up in a single family home. If God loves me, a little black boy that went to some of the poor schools, shipped to some of the better schools. If God loves me, a little black boy that, that thought he knew everything and, and, and chose to get out and live the life that he desires without God, but yet loved me enough to bring me back. If God loves if, if God can do that for me, that means God can do it for anybody. And God doesn't have preference of, of color. He doesn't have preference of finances. He doesn't have preference of, of what type of family you come from. He doesn't have no preference, no variation. The Bible says that he loves everybody. So let me share something with you. I don't care what your background is. I don't care what color you 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 claim to be the bible says that we are all god's children there's another question that, that i have to ask you how how does god relate to people of various distinctions of race and skin color and, and social social class because that's really one of the things that's going on in our nation right now and i want you to know right now according to this text it answers that question. According to the word of God, he no longer sees us as different. We have, and, and watch this, why does he not see us different? Because he has now adopted us. If you have believed in your heart, confessed with your mouth, the Bible suggests not only are you saved, but you have also been adopted into the family of God. Therefore, he sees no color. He sees no socioeconomic difference. He sees no ethnic difference. We are all now God's children. Turn with me to a very rarely used book of the Bible, Micah. M-I-C-A-H. Micah. Chapter 6. We're going to be reading from verse 8. I'm going to give you just half a minute because some of you don't know this, know where it is. And let me just help some of you all. Uh, the, 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 uh, 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 the con table of contents is a wonderful tool. If you don't know where to go, go to the table of contents. It'll help you get there in a hurry. Amen? Amen. Micah, chapter 6, verse 8. It says, He has told you, O man, what is good and what does and what does the Lord require of you? Watch this. But to do justice, to love kindness, and to walk humbly with your God. Now, of course, God would desire for everybody to live like this. But it'd be sort of difficult 
when you're trying to talk to somebody that's not in your family, it's sort of difficult to deal with somebody that doesn't have the same ideologies or the same beliefs that, that you do. So right now with this particular text, I want to address those that claim to know Jesus Christ as their personal Lord and Savior. I want to talk to those that, 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 that believe that they've been bought with the blood of Jesus Christ. That he's talking to the Christian. Those of us that are evangelical, Protestant, or, 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 it doesn't matter, Catholic, whatever denomination you claim, this particular scripture is making reference to those that claim to know God. And so the question here is what does God require or desire from his children or from Christians? Three things that you see here. One, he desires that we act justly. It's amazing to me that, that, that it's not just the folk that are out there that don't accept, that have not accepted Christ. It's not just the folk out there that are living any type of lifestyle and choose not to walk with God. Some of the major pushback as it relates to what's going on in our community, what's going on in our states and in our nation uh, is coming from evangelical folk, church folk family. We are some of the ones that are having the major problems. We are some of the ones that, that, that are spewing some of the most hate. When the Bible says all he desires from you and I is to be just with all mankind. He says just. What's just? Just means treat them right. Justice. It says the quality of being just, fair, moral rightness. And watch this. Decency. Act just. And he said, watch this. Love faithfulness. Faithfulness, family. Faithfulness means that I have faith that goes beyond anything that I can comprehend, anything that I can produce. I have faith in a God that God can handle everything that's going on. COVID-19, God's got it. These riots, these riots and looting, God's got it, but guess what? We have to have faith in him and not try to take control of our own. We have to be faithful, and we have to love those that are faithful. But now watch this. We also have to walk humbly with God. A whole lot of us just had a problem. Some of you are saying, Pastor, I don't have no problem with being humble. Yes, you do. Because let me share something with you. Anytime you can lift yourself above anyone else because of their color, anytime that you can lift yourself above anybody because you got a few dollars more, anytime you can lift yourself above anybody because they have a different educational uh, uh, standard than you do, then you have an humbleness problem. You have a problem with being humble. The Bible says, let me share something with you, that Jesus, who walked this earth for 33 years, he didn't go to seminary, he didn't go to college, he didn't even have a grade school education, but yet he was one of the, he was the wisest man to ever walk this earth. And if you walked with him, you would have never known it. Why? Because he was humble. He knew his place. He knew what he was capable of. And even more so, he knew whom he served. Chew on that for a moment. Because let me share something with you. Anytime you got to, anytime you got to speak about your, 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 your accolades, anytime that you have to lift yourself above anyone else, what you're saying is, is that you are uncomfortable and you are insecure in who you are. It's right, it's right there in the text. I know some of you don't see it. That's why I'm trying to help you. It's right there. We got to walk humble with God. Now, some of you may be asking, but, but Pastor, with all this stuff that's going on, you know, I mean, I'm just tired of, of, of everybody talking about that, you know, we owe this, and, and this is owed to this certain race of folk, and this is owed to a certain race. Well, let me share something with your family, because justice it, it, it looks different for everybody. Yes, it does. Justice looks different. I, I gave the definition for justice. Let me give it to you one more time so you'll understand. The, it's the quality of being just. Now, this word is going gonna, is gonna to get you, but it's very real in the definition. Fair. Moral rightness and decency. So, why? 
Some of you may be asking, why should we, why should, should, should we uh, be, you know, show justice? Why should we have to, 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 to repent and pay for something that, that we didn't personally have anything to do with? No, you may have not had anything personally to do with, per, with, 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 with bringing all of this stuff to, uh, 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 about, but a whole lot of us, and I didn't say you, a whole lot of us have an issue with continuing the pain. Instead of just saying, I understand, and I want to be a part of the solution, instead of being a continuing part of the problem, we become combative, and we want to fight over something that we can never win. We didn't start the fight, but guess what? We can end the fight just by being fair and decent. Why should we do it? One, we should do it because it's right. That's one reason. That's right here in the, in the Bible. Two, we should do it because God requires it. That's right here in our text. Three, we should do it because, watch this, and a whole lot of us don't want to agree with this, but watch this. He gave you and I the same justice that others are crying out to, to receive. I know some of you... You know, you grew up, you've never been in trouble, you've never done anything wrong, you never had to get a spanking, you never had to go to timeout or whatever situation may have been in your household. Well, let me share something with you. That's only because you've never been caught. Because everybody has sinned. How do I know that? The Bible says, for we all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. And watch this. Last but not least, why should we do it? Because regardless of what someone else do, they deserve justice. So some of you, you know, it's amazing to me that when, when someone gets hurt or when someone uh, uh, is, is, is killed for whatever reason the situation may have been, we always want to go back and pull up their history. We always want to go back and pull up what they've done. Well, let me share something with you. What if God opened up the book on your life and started showing everything that you've done? What if God opened up the book on your life and, 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 and opened it for the world to see some of the junk, some of the dirt, some of the mess that you've been in? So just like you want mercy, just like you want grace, give it to someone else. Turn with me over to Exodus. I'm almost done. Exodus chapter 23, verses 6 through 9. It says, you shall not pervert the justice due to your needy brother in his dispute. Keep far from a false charge and do not kill the innocent or the righteous for I will not acquit the guilty. Let me stop there because some of you, y'all going to miss this. See, some of you, you feel as though that because someone got away, that they've gotten away. No, no. Just because the police didn't catch him, just because the, the, the legal system didn't catch him, God will always give justice. It says, you shall not take a bribe, for a bribe blinds the clear-sighted and subverts the cause of the just. You shall not oppress a stranger, watch this, since you yourselves know the feelings of a stranger, for you also were strangers in the land of Egypt. In other words, family, what it's saying here, listen, it's funny how we tend to forget where God has brought us from. And just because you've gotten a little status, just because you've been in church a minute or two, that you stop real remembering the fact that just like you used to be, so are they. And just like you wanted grace and mercy, then they want it too. And just like you didn't deserve it then, they may not deserve it now, but God says he's not going to withhold it from anybody that calls on the name of the Lord. And neither should you. Don't ever forget where you came from. Don't ever forget what you used to do. That's why we should treat one another right. And finally, I, I need to just run this past you. Because this is a good one. If you turn with me to Isaiah chapter 1. Isaiah. 
Isaiah chapter 1. I'm going to read this to you because this is really where we need, this is where we are right now. This is where we are right now, and I'm going to get out your way. Isaiah chapter 1, I'm going to start in the 10th verse, and I'm going to read to the 17th verse. We're going to, you're going to see something here. It says, hear the word of the Lord, you rulers of Sodom. Give ear to the instruction of our God, you people of Gomorrah. What are you multi multi what are your multiplied sacrifices to me says the lord i have had enough of burnt offerings of rams and the fat of fed cattle and i take no pleasure in the blood of bulls lamb or goats when you come to appear before me who requires of you this trampling of my courts Bring your worthless offerings no more. Incense is an ab abomination to me. New moon and Sabbath, the calling of assemblies. I cannot endure in iniquity and the solemn assembly. I hate your new moon festivals and your appointed feast. They have become a burden to me. I am weary of bearing them. So when you spread out your hands in prayer, I will hide my eyes from you. Yes, even though you multiply prayers, I will not listen. Your hands are covered with blood. Wash yourselves. Make yourselves clean. Remove the evil of your deeds from my sight. Cease to do evil. Learn to do good, seek justice, reprove the ruthless, defend the orphan, and plead for the widow. In other words, family, let me just let me just run this passage because this was this was some good stuff for me. When it says, "Hear the word, you rulers of Sodom and and the people of Gomorrah, what are your multiplied sacrifices to me? I've had enough." In other words, let me share something with you. God is saying, "I'm getting sick and tired." Of all the junk that you're doing. I'm getting, yes, I see you praying. Yes, I see you marching. Yes, I see you you're doing, you, you, you're pushing for justice. But guess what? You've been doing it. You've been doing it over and over. You've been kneeling. You've been praying. You've been begging. And you've been looking to me. But guess what you haven't been doing? You haven't been getting rid of the evil in your heart. And because you haven't been getting rid of the evil in your heart, guess what? I don't hear you. I don't see you. I don't want to have nothing to do with you. God is saying, I'm getting sick and tired. of coming back to this same situation over and over again, and you still haven't changed. He said, you want, you want to hear from me? Change. And it says not just change, but as believers in Christ, it is our responsibility, it's right there in the 17th verse, First of all, learn to do good. Yeah, I'm talking to you Christians. I'm talking to you folk that say you believe in Christ. Learn to do good. And then once you learn to do good yourself, seek justice. And as you, as you seek justice, remove or reprove the ruthless. How can you reprove the ruthless? I'm glad you asked. Listen. You got folk that are in your in, in, in your arena. You got folk that are in your circles and they're they're talking about hate. They're spewing racism. They're talking about being angry and hurting and killing people. Say something. Don't just let them move, walk away. Say something. It says, defend the orphans, those that can't take care of themselves. The Plead for the widows, those that can no longer stand and protect themselves. 
Yes, we need to cry out for those that are being hurt. Yes, we need to cry out for those that, that are being taken advantage of. Yes, we need to cry out for them. Why? Because God said so. It's time out for all the talk. It's time out for all the marching. It's time out for all the kneeling. All of it is good, but if we don't have a change in our actions, then it's for nothing. And God says it right here in Isaiah 1, 10 through 17. He ain't hearing you. So how do we deal with the issues that we're dealing with right now? Let me give you a personal charge. Stand up. Stand up for justice. Stand up for what's right. Yes, it's going to be uncomfortable, but stand up. Yes, it's going to be inconvenient, but stand up. Yes, you might lose some friends, but stand up. Yes, you might even lose some family, but stand. Grass may wither, or will come and go. But the Bible says the word of our Lord will stand forever. Stand up. May God keep you. Is our prayer. May we pray. Father, thank you for your word. Thank you so much for just being who you are. Now, Father, I pray now for peace. And I pray now for, for courage to stand in the midst of all that's going on in our land. I thank you, Father. I thank you because I know what you're capable of doing. So, Father, have your way in our hearts. I plead for you to be with us and, and stand within us that we may stand against the wiles of Satan. Yes, it is our responsibility. And yes, you have given us a charge. So right now, Father, I extend that charge to my brothers and my sisters, those that may be listening to my weak voice right now. Now, Lord, have your way. Open doors where they need to be open. Close them that we shall not go through. And ultimately, Father, I pray that we give your name glory, honor, and all of the praise. It's in Jesus' name we do pray and we ask it all. Amen. God bless you, family. Have a wonderful rest of the week. I pray that we see you on Sunday morning for our time of Sunday school. Pray that we see you on Sunday morning for our special Father's Day fellowship and worship at 10 o'clock. If you're on Facebook, you can go to our website to see all that's going on at www.newhopeclute.church. Love to see you there. Be blessed. Take care.